I'm Tia Borden with Mining IR. Joining me are Ian and Fianna of Libero Copper. Thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity to have us. You guys have a number of different projects on the go right now. Can you tell us about the flagship project and perhaps the other projects that you're currently working on? Sure. So we're concentrated on copper porphyries within the Americas with a key distinction. We're looking for projects that have the potential to become future mines, which means a lot. You're looking for big size, big scale, um, because at the end of the day, the world needs a lot of copper. It can't be building 90 projects. It's going to be the bigger size projects that have that big potential being constructed that we're focusing on. Uh, our flagship project is Makoa in Colombia uh, because it already has an established very large resource over 600 million tons, contains over 2 million pounds, uh, sorry, 2 million tons of copper, uh, 500 million pounds of molly. Uh, world molly production is 600 million pounds, so it gives you an idea of the size and scale, and it's still just in its beginning and continuing to grow. Well, no, America has a lot of potential. Now with copper, for example, Colombia is starting to explore all these commodities that are used for energy transition. So we are starting to open all these uh, opportunities for the world, no? And not only Colombia, we're also based in Argentina, so uh, and also here in Canada, so there are a lot of opportunities. And what's the infrastructure like in these areas? Oh, it's wonderful. Colombia now is well advanced, uh, full uh, roads, electricity, communities around are really positive about these processes very positive infrastructure. At, at the Mocoa project, we have the interconnection between Colombia and Ecuador, five kilometers from the project to 220 kVA power lines. We're 10 kilometers from the national road system. 75% uh, of all the electricity comes from hydroelectric. Um, it's a very positive infrastructure and really helps support a, a project of this size and scale. Now, I'm sure you have a wonderful team behind you, but are there any standouts, anyone on the, the board or management team that you'd like to, to point out? So, I mean, I brought Diana because she is, uh, you know, we're very synchronized in the, our thought process that, that it's not just a technical issue. I'm a mining engineer by background, but ensuring that there's very strong and local connections based on, on, on real needs. Uh, making our steel toe boots, making our uniforms, going to farms for the, the food, talking to 5,000 people before even starting our exploration programs. Those are the type of things that create a lot of strength. I myself was previously Senior Vice President of Country Manager of Corriente Resources and helped build the Mirador Project, the first project ever in Ecuador. But a director of ours, Ernie Mast, did almost the same thing in Panama at Cobre Panama. He was CEO of Inmets Cobre Panama which all went on to become the first large-scale mine in the history of Panama. So all that knowledge is more than just applied for exploration, but also how to develop large-scale projects. Amazing. Now, can you tell us a bit about your financing? So in financing, uh, we raised $8.3 million last February, uh, which would takes us through the year. But obviously, we're in the exploration and development, so we'll be doing additional raises as we work on advancing our projects. And what are some of the catalysts that investors should be aware of going into the next half of this year? Big catalysts? Big catalysts. No, you tell them. <laughs> okay. The biggest catalyst right now, we're actually starting drilling at Big Red. It's a seasonal program. Uh, we're testing a very large anomaly based on last year's drilling of where is this mineralization coming from. We identified a very large two kilometer by three kilometer potassium anomaly directly to the east. So extremely excited about that. And then obviously, Makoa just put out one of the best drill holes in the world. It was the 10th best drill hole in copper in the last year, uh, and it's our first hole. So obviously, as we continue to drill at Makoa, we expect an extreme valuation change. To put it in perspective, we're worth $25 million today, a comparable project, similar grades, about a third of the size in Orinza and Solaris is worth $1.3 billion. So we know that as we continue to advance the project, we can create significant value for our shareholders, and it should be a massive catalyst. And what makes you guys stand out from other junior mining companies? Well, our projects, of course, the quality, the large of the deposits, but also the way we work with communities, with all the people around, we're based on our values. Yeah, it's a company that has first uh, overcome communities, people as, as the core, at the center of our operations. So we work in two main values, respect, responsibility, yeah, establishing all the, the support we need to advance 
and to go ahead to become this or make these projects a mine in the future. Which are the key factors in any successful company. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, if people want and our investors want more information, where can they go to find it? www.liberocopper.com is the easiest way. Come visit us here at PDAC. Uh, we love sharing uh, our projects with anybody we can talk to. Amazing. Thank you both for joining me Thank today. Thank you. Very Enjoy much. the rest of the conference. <laughs>